little Malcolm Weatherby at your service. And today, we are at Hiroko Summit, in the middle of the desert, out off of I-10. What we're going to explore today is the General Patton Memorial Museum. General George Smith Patton Sr. was born in San Gabriel, California on November 11, 1885. Patton had a remarkable and diverse background. He was a competitor in the pentathlon for the 1912 Olympic Games in Stockholm, Sweden. Patton was an extraordinary fencer and even trained with some of the world's most renowned fencers in France. In 1916, Patton was a second lieutenant in the United States Army, and during that time he led a small contingent of troops in the U.S. military's response to Pancho Villa's border attacks on the United States. General Patton was one of the most recognized generals of World War II for his concern about his troops' well-being and his positive effects on morale. General Patton was a very aggressive strategist and emphasized keeping pressure on the enemy by constant advancement. His victories in North Africa, Italy, and Europe played a critical role in defeating the Axis powers. Unfortunately, on December 8, 1945, General Patton passed away due to injuries suffered from a vehicle collision. This region of the Southwest Desert was used as a training ground for U.S. infantry and armor divisions to prepare them for the harsh desert environment of North Africa. In 1942, General Patton was assigned to oversee the operation. General Patton held training as one of the most important elements of victory and ensured his forces were mentally and physically prepared for battle. The inside of the museum is quite delightful, as you can see it has an extraordinary collection of small arms and artifacts from World War II. Let's go check out what the backyard has to offer. Directly behind me here is an M4 Sherman tank. This was the backbone of the armor divisions in World War II for the Americans. Directly behind me here is an M26 Pershing tank. This was America's only heavy tank during World War II. Armed with a 90 millimeter main gun and two 30 caliber machine guns, uh, this tank had a significant greater uh, armor penetrating capability and, of course, more armor. But unfortunately, it only saw service in 1945 and it was really too late to counter the German armor technology at the time. Here are images of both post and pre World War II hardware. Apparently, on the same day of my visit, the museum was hosting an automobile show. Let's investigate these wonderful machines. Myself and the British Empire thank you for watching today's episode. Consider adding me on Facebook, Instagram, and support me on Patreon so I may improve future educational videos. God save the Queen.